Okay, so in this, um, we have a reaction in which aluminum is reacted with sulfur, and the important thing here is that sulfur is the gas. That's the only gas, and that produces aluminum sulfide. Okay, so we have a certain mass of aluminum that's placed in a 7.46 liter con uh, cylinder in an atmosphere of sulfur gas at 1.75 atmospheres and a temperature of 160 C. Two minutes later, the pressure's dropped, and so has the temperature dropped. And that's because sulfur gas has reacted, okay? And we'll say some sulfur gas has reacted, because obviously there's still gas in the cylinder. And then um, we want to find out how much of the aluminum has reacted, and it says how much is left unreacted. So it's probably going to be less than 3.66 grams. All right, so um, we're, we're going to be thinking all along here of PV equals NRT. That's going to be the equation that drives what we do here. So um, I want to figure out the initial moles of sulfur, okay? Because I don't know, it doesn't say what the moles of sulfur are, but it does give us the pressure, the volume, and we know R and T. Okay, so that's going to be um, 1.75 atmospheres. That's given. And the volume is 7.46 liters. That's also given. Here's R, and then our temperature is 433 Kelvin. We change that to Kelvin. We need to change 160, uh, add that to 273. So our initial moles of sulfur turns out to be 0.367 moles. Now we're going to do the same thing. Our um, final moles of sulfur, or at least after two minutes, it's going to be the same equation. But this time, our pressure is 1.21 atmospheres. Our volume's the same. It's a cylinder, so we're going to assume with that language being cylinder, that that's not changing. If it said balloon, it would be changing, but cylinder, that's going to be a rigid container. And then our temperature drops to 395K. Again, that's adding the 120 to three, uh, 273. We get three. I'm sorry, that's going to be 393K, not 394K. Okay, so now our final moles of sulfur is going to equal 0 0.280 moles. So that this is this 0 0.367 is what we started with, and then after the two minutes we had 0 0.280. So the moles of sulfur used is going to be 0.367 minus 0.280 moles of sulfur, which turns out to be 0.087 moles sulfur reacted. Now, of course, we can plug that into our equation. Uh, knowing the molar ratio from the balanced equation. So now we can figure out our moles of aluminum that reacted. So I'm going to take 0 0.087 moles of sulfur. That's what's reacted. And we're going to put moles S down here and moles aluminum on top. From that balanced equation, we see that it is 
two to three. That's my that's my mole ratio. And then I'm going to change that to grams. 27.0 grams aluminum for one mole of aluminum. And that gives me 1.6 grams of aluminum that reacted. We got that from the sulfur that reacted. Okay, and then now we're going to figure out the mass of aluminum left over. So we started with 3.66 grams aluminum, that's initial, that was what was given, and we're going to subtract 0.087 grams aluminum reacted, and that's going to equal 2.1 grams aluminum left over. Now it says in part B, calculate the mass of aluminum sulfide formed. So um, the easiest way would be to start with moles. So I'm going to start with that point um, 087 moles of sulfur rather than convert grams back to moles. So I'm going to start with 0 0.087 moles of sulfur and then multiply by, and that's reacted. We need to use what was reacted. And I'm going to multiply that by my mole ratio. So moles sulfur on the bottom and moles aluminum sulfide on top. And that's 1 to 3 from the balanced equation. And then I need to uh, put in here the molar, whoops, multiply. We're going to multiply by the grams aluminum sulfide per one mole aluminum sulfide, which is 150 grams to one mole. And we get 4.4 grams aluminum sulfide formed.